everybody. Uh, it's on a loop. <laughs> hey, welcome to my morning show. I'm Scott Ramp, and I'm here to usher you in into the weekend. Uh, it is uh, September 24th. There's a lot of stuff happening here, and especially here in the library. Homecoming parade here in the city of Missoula has been canceled because of the rising numbers of COVID cases. The library had uh, every worker wear a mask and encourage them those entering wearing a mask from now on. At an emergency meeting on Wednesday, uh, September 15th, the board uh, decided with high numbers to enact a more aggressive approach and starting this week uh, on Monday the 20th, uh, it went into full effect where you can see signs where uh, masks are mandated. But according to uh, the state law, uh, which forbids the use of ma mask mandates, so most of the law, um, so that's kind of uh, just a little bit of background on there. Let's talk about s anything else besides the library stuff. So some big news for some kids, uh, 5 to 11, the vaccine is good to go. Within the Pfizer vaccine, FDA approved it for uh, uh, booster shots in terms of kids between the ages of 5 and 11. Um, uh, for those under 5, they'll have to wait a bit, but now the vaccine is basically like any old booster shot a kid gets as they're getting older. Uh, so the thing is, is that we're stuck. Uh, oh, okay. Let me just start over. For those under five, we will have to wait a bit, but now the vaccine is basically like any other old booster shot. And uh, because let's just face it, we're stuck with this thing and sometimes you cannot choose the viruses that you live with. Let's talk about something else, anything else. Uh, pop culture I news is something to I avoid, but a sleeper hit and now actual hit, Ted Lasso brings home seven Emmys this week. If you don't know uh, why everyone's on the bandwagon for this uh, fictional football coach coaching a soccer team in England, then go to YouTube and look up these, kid wor cu these keywords, Ted Lasso, Dart Game, and you're welcome. All right, the United States decided to start flying Haitians back to Haiti. Uh, Haiti, one of the first independently black nations today, has dealt with so much turmoil over the last decade, um, especially just recently with the assassination of their president, Jovenel uh, Moise. Uh, the weird connection to the United States with the assassin uh, as a U.S. citizen, followed by the Prime Minister, Ariel Henry, seizing power in the region. Many errors were raised at his swift action to gain control. Then on top of that, an earthquake hit August 14th at about 11.30 a.m. and almost a month after Henry was sworn in as president with a magnitude of 7.2 on the Richter scale. Each number is uh, the power equivalent of 10. So one, uh, so two is two's magnitude is 10 times more powerful than one and so on. Uh, back to the migrants, uh, 12,000 are now on the pro in the process of being flown back to their home country. And so far, 300 have successfully been brought back to Port-au-Prince, the capital of Haiti. And these are uh, earlier in the week news. So Mexico does not accept migrants that don't uh, have the uh, Central American, how do I uh, say it, look. Uh, so they're even more discriminated against there as well. Haiti it has not fully recovered from the 2010 earthquake and has been coming in large numbers ever since. The la this last earthquake has made it very difficult for many Haitians to stay in their own country, and many of them have uh, sought refuge in the United States. The U.S. and the Biden administration are using COVID as an excuse to send Haitians directly back home without any option to apply for refugee status. Basically, the border crisis from the Trump administration has continued well through the Biden administration, and the scapegoating continues. Their main crossing point was the Rio Grande out of Texas, and they should have been apparent from these pictures of the border control agents wear wearing cowboy hats and riding horses. Here is a picture of the uh, border patrol right here. So yeah, and then there were some pictures of them being chased out. This is a picture uh, by Associated Press, uh, Felix Mar uh, Marquise. And uh, yeah, this is uh, l what a lot of the Haitians have been met with here and there. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the the border situation's getting kind of uh, pretty crazy for sure. And uh, uh, it, 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 which also brings me to my next topic, jobs. You know, like uh, Missoula ain't the only place that needs to fill jobs. Think about it, fresh out of World War II. I'm, I'm going really far back. And think about this, it's not only just a, uh, a crisis of COVID, it is also a crisis of the fact that the baby boomers are retiring and uh, now folks born more than 60 years ago are now retiring. Uh, the population in the U.S. Uh, is at a decline, and there are a major hole in uh, many positions that can no longer fill the right jobs. Jobs are not as competitive as they used to be. NPR did a story about a trucker fresh out of trucking school uh, shipping gas now. 
um, which is weird because most petroleum companies require years of experience before shipping the very flammable substance that is essential to the lifeblood of the Missoula, uh, of the uh, U.S. economy. Think about that for a second. First, the academy and hoist into position of seasoned veterans. Not only that trucker, but most specialized fields are looking to see uh, some of those uh, demands with a high demand, maybe even potentially uh, paying for a lot of colleges something to look think about for those of you uh, looking to improve your uh, job positions and maybe potentially get good scholarship out of it. But uh, Missoula Current did a story which is kind of interesting because um, they also mentioned that Missoula's unemployment is uh, the lowest in the state at 2.8 percent compared to the uh, U.S. average which is 5.2 percent. Uh, back uh, in June, Governor June Forte withheld unemployment benefits back in June. Um, and it said, it basically set a tone in Montana to get back to work. And as a result, all Montanans lost because the pandemic have now been filled 100%. Missoula Current had uh, more on the story. You can go to MissoulaCurrent.com for, for the full story, which is also weird because uh, such a low unemployment in Missoula, there are so many jobs uh, listed, like everywhere in Missoula. You cannot go anywhere and expect good service from certain restaurants. This week I spoke with a guy from Seattle, and he was, you know, he was out to lunch. He just moved to town, and he, you know, he was at a place, and he's like, oh, wow, the service is really slow here. And it, the, the restaurant was fairly empty around that time. And so, and I mean, to the point where he had to complain, the manager came out and says, hey, I, I'm really sorry, but, you know, like, we're so low-staffed and everything. And uh, the satellite uh, anecdotally uh, told me that he kind of joked, he's like, well, I'll, I'll work here. And then almost, like, moments later, the manager came out with, a, uh, <laughs> an application for that job. So this was happening, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's very weird. Um, this is happening long before, and I'm going to actually reach back into, uh, like, specialized workers. And uh, my old university news days, uh, back 10 years ago, say, uh, or so, nursing itself is on uh, more demanding education as far as master's degrees minimum by 2020. Uh, I'm not sure if that statement rings true today, but of course we all know what happened in 2020. Now nurses, hospital workers, and staff are being exposed more and more in Missoula. Um, they're understaffed, and the ones who are staffed are at home sick if they do get sick, and then they can't go into work, and then they have to fill those positions. Local officials and now top brass of the Community Medical and St. Pat's Hospital are pleading for Missoulians to mask up and vax up. And I made a montage of a press uh, conference that happened last last Saturday. So this is uh, kicking things off with uh, Mayor John Engen. We cannot order you to wear a mask. Um, and and even if we could, frankly, um, we got to rely on on the goodwill and good nature of human beings uh, to do the right thing. Um, so mask mandate or no mask mandate, uh, please wear a mask, please protect yourself and please protect others. Um, we know that our hospital systems are overwhelmed at the moment. And as a community, anything we can do to keep ourselves out of the emergency room is helpful. So not just those mitigation behaviors that I just mentioned, but just in general, now is not the time to be out there doing, you know, extreme physical challenges or pushing yourself beyond your limits if you have, you know, a pre-existing condition. Instead, now is the time for us as a community to use caution, to use restraint, and to let our hospital staff do the work that needs to be done around COVID-19 without adding additional complications and burden. And so I think from a from a community standpoint, it's it's really asking and maybe to use your words, Mary, and begging individuals to get vaccinated, to mask, and really to social distance, to go back to those very basics. Uh, we need your help. We are not gonna be in the position to provide the same level of care if we can't stop the flow of the COVID patients coming into our organization. And we're Just because the mandates aren't there doesn't mean it's not the right thing to do. And so it's gonna take a little while getting the vaccine to, to have that have an effect, need to do that. But right now what you can do is you can mask, you can social distance, you can do hand hygiene, you can uh, think about what's right for your family and your friends, because this is not a political issue. Wearing a mask is not a sign of weakness. Wearing a mask is a sign that you care about your friend and your family and your community. Uh, and currently, we have 20 COVID patients in our facility, um, approximately one third of our overall adult inpatient census. 85% of our hospitalized COVID patients are unvaccinated. 93% uh, of our ICU COVID patients in our facility are unvaccinated. 
Uh, the trends uh, we are seeing are definitely skewing towards younger patients, and our COVID patients are getting much more sick uh, more quickly. Um, Healthcare resources are not unlimited, and as institutions, we are going above and beyond right now, shifting everything we have to take care of the patients that are in our hospitals and to try to keep people also um, able to get care on an outpatient basis, but we can't do this alone. We desperately, desperately need the help of the citizens that are our neighbors and our friends and our family in this community. Um, so I ask you, please, please get vaccinated. Please get vaccinated for COVID. Please get vaccinated for the flu. Please wear your masks to protect, to decrease the spread of this virus. And please social distance. It's the basics that we've been doing since the beginning of this pandemic, but this, the, the, the vaccine is highly effective at uh, keeping people out of the hospital. Right now, many of our businesses are still able to operate because we have the great outdoor spaces to use and it's still warm, but we're just weeks away from a transition in the season. And now is our chance to get ahead of the Delta variant so that as we enter fall and cooler weather, our businesses can stay open and stay, uh, stay in operations and we can maintain the community character that we all love. If you have a child that's over the age of 12, I encourage you to get vaccinated, get your child vaccinated. If you have questions about the vaccine, please reach out to your healthcare provider to talk about it. If you don't have a healthcare provider, please contact our school and talk to one of our school nurses about vaccines. We're encouraging vaccines for any child over the age of 12. We think it really help keep kids in school and keep transmission. Yeah, the science is unambiguous. Getting vaccinated, wearing masks, socially distancing makes a difference. And this is, and I will uh, follow uh, your lead here to some extent, Mayor Engen, uh, in terms of uh, shading into being a bit preachy here, this is a civic responsibility, I believe, to get vaccinated. This is all about caring for one another and our community. As Dr. McKay earlier mentioned, caring for one another. This, this is the heart of the matter right now. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about movies coming out this weekend as well. We are going to jump right in to uh, my segment, Pre-Critic, where I prejudge a movie based on absolutely nothing but maybe the poster and a little bit of the synopsis, and I might need to watch a trailer to be like, okay, I don't get it. What's the deal with this photo? Let's kick things off with Dear Evan Hansen. From the stories about suicide at a young age comes yet another drama about being a teenager forced out of a comfort zone in the aftermath of a traumatic event. Dear Evan Hansen follows an awkward but sad teen as only person as the only person notice him kill oh wait, sorry, my grammar's terrible. Uh it follows an awkward but sad teen that the only person who notices him ends up killing himself, and now the kid's family will force the socially awkward kid to sing or whatever. Um I saw the trailer and it was like, oh uh, and I was hearing the music kind of in the background, and then I noticed like the main character was starting to sing. It's just like, why is this old teenage guy singing? Oh, okay. Anyways, uh, I s <laughs> watch a depressing movie about lying, getting caught, and stepping up to be the best version of yourself. Who, <laughs> who would want to see that? All right. Uh, this next movie is I'm Your Man. Uh, this movie uh, blindsided me because I don't look at most movies. I'm Your Man has the guy who played Beast in Beauty and the Beast uh, live action as he goes into woo a lady uh, of the film who has just given up on love, uh, I assume. Anyways, actually, this is a sci-fi movie <laughs> about a woman who falls in love with a love bot. Uh, she's getting paid to hang out with this for a short while, you know, kind of like a test or anything. It's very deus ex machina kind of crap. But anyways, it's, 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 it's about finding out loving an inanimate object beats the disappointing reality that humans have faults that you may no longer have to put up with anymore. Anyways, this movie is about an experiment that might go too right, but at what cost? Kind of like a... Uh, a light-hearted deus ex machina. Up next, we got another movie called Apache Junction. It's like they listen to a Joe Rogan podcast and are just like, why don't we just make a movie about Apaches? But no, they're not going to do it. Apache Junction, what's your function? The continued exploit of Native Americans by whitewashing the past and make to make money to 
go to your local theaters. But but ignore the Apaches because this is about cowboys trying to do the right thing regardless of the lawless circumstances they have come to know in the Western Frontier days. A reporter, snooze, is a target. Ugh, come on. Um, a cowboy with a shady past, anti-hero, uh, must get the... The, the hot female reporter to safety and owe herself to him by proxy. Uh, basic Hollywood plot crap. Anyways, that's your pre-critic. And up next, we got a dubbing stuff for you guys featuring uh, the incredible petrified world from 1959. Oh, oh yes, on the ocean Excuse me, Captain. Do we know oh. where we're going? Uh, sometimes. There's uh, just too much ocean, Captain. Going on? Ooh. Yo, Captain Bro. Uh, I'm just wondering when we're gonna get to going to the place that we're meant to go. I really hate to say this, but, uh, I'm really, really bored. So if maybe if we knew huh? where we were going, then maybe... Uh, don't ask too many questions, you hear? It's just that it's been a while since I've seen my girl. I'm just getting really, really homesick, and I really want to see huh? her. I'm just be surrounded by a bunch of men. Huh? I don't see what's wrong with not seeing women. Well, maybe we can find a port with, like, a mail service. Uh, please? Then I can send a letter to my girlfriend. Do you think that would be possible? Huh? Girlfriend? Well, yeah. As a straight white male, we have needs too. And I just want to talk to my girl. If that's okay, I just want to let her know that I'm okay. Uh, hmm. Captain, it has been a while. Uh -huh. I will take any dock pay that you see fit. I just need to get to port. Huh. I, 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 I see what you're doing. Women aren't real. You're just making that up. No, I swear, Captain. It's just been way too long. And ah, Captain. Let's just take him over there already. We've been stuck on the ship for quite a while, and we just... And I just want to see my girl. Ah. Uh, how many times must I tell you? Women aren't real. Oh, um... Okay, thanks, Captain. Huh. Frank Winner. All right, we're going to shift tones uh, like really hard today as we're jumping right into your city council meeting. Um, I usually don't talk too much about public comment because it seems to be the same old, same old public comment. But we're kicking things off with uh, public comment, starting with uh, Matt Larson. So here is Matt Larson uh, from the community. We've had 10 police shootings in Missoula since 2015. Um, we have a new police chief who was brought in uh, from the outside and not promoted from within in order to clean up our police squad, I believe. And we also have some open complaints against MPD, given uh, the fact that they are not using their body cameras. Um, so there's just a lot of problems here that it would be very helpful uh, to the citizens of Missoula if the city council members would actually do something to provide equitable justice for those in their community. But I mean, it's sort of par for the course. You know, we got a we got a county commissioners that run a jail with 25 percent native general populace. Um, we have uh, city council members who just want to sit on their hands and not not even address these issues. Um, and we have Chief White, who's personally been involved in 34 officer related shootings in the last 10 years. So we obviously know where he stands on this type of thing. Um, shoot first, ask questions later. All right. So uh, during the meeting, uh, um, as well as uh, time and time, shootings in Missoula have been met with outcry from the public to understand what's happening in our community and to avoid a path that would endanger Missoulians under arrest. The city appointed the city police chief and the county holds an election for th their police, for our police chief. Perhaps maybe an election for our city police chief might be in order. Just a thought going out there. But of course, John Ingen responds to Matt Larson after cutting him off. Um, let's see. This is... Uh, because of Mr. Larson's personal attacks, I just cut him off. Um, there are a variety of misstatements there, statements that are not bounded in fact. Um, and while this forum is uh, certainly for public comment, um, it's not for the dissemination of misinformation. So Mr. Larson will not be able to continue that. All right. So that was uh, John Ingham's response to Matt Larson's comments. Uh, suppressing public comment is wrong and should be uh, heard regardless of whether it's correct or not. Matt Larson has been a main critic of the city and, and has been keeping them on their toes. This will not be the last we hear from Mr. Larson. Moving on, block grants uh, will be the public hearing to, uh, on, on Monday's agenda, and they talk about the CARES and ARPA money. Uh, you, you know, it's COVID relief money moved towards affordable housing and such. Local median income for Missoula is about $75,000 for a family of 
for. And the target for affordable housing is those who make less than 80% of that, which is about 60000 a year. CAPER, or the Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report, uh, the pr presented uh, um, basically, uh, this has been nailed to my head for the last weeks or so. So here's Karen uh, Gasvoda with the Community Development talks about funding um, and all the uh, all the money that we're getting from ARPA and also um, the CARES Act. In program year 20, we were awarded nearly $577,000 in CDBG funds, 394 in home funding, and 705,000 in CDBG CARES Act funding. With those funds, including any program income we received from past projects, we were able to, to, to fund a total of 12 projects. While we received approximately the same amount of funds each year from HUD, yeah. with the addition of the CARES Act funds in 2020, the funds aren't adjusted for inflation, which means we have to do more with less money. All right. So uh, we went into a little bit more information about uh, exactly where a lot of this money went to. Um, let's see, where did I put that? Okay, these programs are in place to provide what is called soft money. Grants are awarded every year and can change and evolve, so CAPER has to adjust them and the projected views based on the uh, projects that best reflect the biggest impact for the least amount of money. I mean, uh, essentially more projects isn't a ne uh, necessarily a good idea because sometimes w you run the risk of having uh, more setbacks and if you if for every setback, there's uh, initial cost related to it. And it's a very, even w when it comes to developers who want to develop in the city of Missoula and they're met with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, city council interference here and there. And uh, any kind of delay can put them back uh, tens to twenties, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, basically. Um, uh, the, and, and one of the biggest money uh, with the, a lot of these funds in this uh, CARES Act and ARPA money is that the tra Trinity Navigation Center is going to be providing over 200 units of homes on two different sites are one of the uh, successes of this program, and the target date is 2023. There's a, there's a lot of wait and see with this. I mean, people want to like, we want housing. It's like, okay, we're going to do it because it actually takes time to build the housing. But then again, there's always a couple things that are just like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? It's like there's a lot more that has to be done, but this is the, the approach that the city is taking. Um, and they spoke on all their projects from 2019 to about now. And this is a five-year deal ending in 2023. So imagine your family is being evicted and you need a place pronto. So here is Karen talking about that. The Metal Art provides a comprehensive array of services to homeless families and families at risk of homelessness homelessness in one location and ensures that families are sheltered the same night they lose, lose their housing. The goal was to house 25 families. As of this report, 34 families have been housed at the Metal Arc. Yep. So the Metal Arc, if you haven't, if you don't know what that is, it's part of the YWCA. It was a big push uh, to improve their uh, uh, building and structure and just to have a, a place for people to go to where they can feel safe. Um, and one of the many things about this as well is that homeless individuals will have to go to the Pavarella Center, which has been another topic that saw great benefits from these grants to hire social workers and provide more hands-on help for the individuals, not to mention they're under the scrutiny of the health department to make sure that they were basically at half the amount of people that were allowed to stay at the Pav, which is why they were able to deviate some of the monies to move to the uh, former Sheck Firehouse, which is on Johnson and North Street. Uh, there's... Uh, but overall, this public hearing was more informational than anything that works to help those um, in their own diverse housing crisis. Because not all uh, problems are, this are, are similar, uh, but everyone's struggles are differently, are different. So Kendra Lysom, uh, with uh, also with community development in uh, in numbers, those uh, and and she okay. I, I got to really work on my grammar first and foremost, but I'm going to ignore that completely. And we're going to jump over to Kendra's comment talking about how many, pe how many people were helped uh, because of these grants and monies. The intent of the emergency shelter sanitation project was to ensure that the Pavarello Center is as safe and sanitary as possible for its guests, volunteers, and staff. The goals of the project were to one, keep the coronavirus from transmitting among individuals experiencing homelessness, Two, provide a sanitary environment for the Pavarello Center. And three, to retain the Pavarello's essential employees by taking every measure possible to ensure a sanitary work environment. The Emergency Winter Shelter Project provided safe, expanded shelter capacity to Missoula's unhoused population during the harsh winter months. 
From its opening on November 1st, 2020, the emergency winter shelter was fully staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Beginning in April, the shelter went down to op operating 12 hours a day, providing a place to sleep for those who would otherwise experience unsheltered homelessness. This project also exceeded its goal. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, these are the, uh, the, the numbers. Uh, and this is all the outcomes from 2020, all the numbers people were helped, all the individuals. Um, and then, you know, uh, provided COVID-19 support during isolation, the 228. Um, and, you know, there, there's just a definitely a lot as well. Um, you know, even the emergency shelter for about almost uh, about 800 provided emergency shelter, emergency shelter for people who are exposed to COVID-19 as well, and also providing them care in a safe environment. Because a lot of times uh, sickness is even worse when it comes to being homeless as well, because you're kind of... Uh, uh, deprived of certain amenities such as being warm inside your own home and then a lot of times the outdoor temperatures and the cold environment does not help uh, illness so there yeah there's a lot going on there as well and um, CBD uh, CDBG and home are uh, to thank for providing the navigation for grant money to uh, go to the right places and also grants from cares and offer were geared towards curving the homelessness but also at the same time providing them a place to stay during these difficult times uh, moving on uh, mra's new policy percentage cap at nine percent will look to curb missoula spending and focus it more on development in missoula a lot of people were worried that uh, missoula has a spending problem and they want to figure out uh, the best way to uh, uh, have their cake and eat it too. So they had this new policy and Dale Bickle talks about tips expand uh, how and, and basically how they expand the, the tax base. I showed this graph beforehand last week, but here he is talking a little bit more about it. You know, we rely on private sector investments and you know, the, and with the incentives that tips provides to do to uh, to start building that tax base. And as the uh, um, tax base matures, um, there, there is additional tax base within those increment districts and, and then the focus of those districts then shifts to uh, the public style projects of infrastructure and uh, creating a strategic plan that is mindful of that uh, is important. All right. So, oh, wait, hold on. Let me just show that graph once again, because it's also very important for me to mention this as well, is that, um, yeah, think about this. Um, it's, it's the city of Missoula wants to invest in um, people and, and in infrastructure and want to be able to figure out ways to improve the city of Missoula. And TIF has been used to uh, kind of help leverage more businesses to come into the city of Missoula. Um, but, you know, and many speculation is just like uh, um, many people would say that, oh, it's be because of you know tax breaks to developers and money and stuff like that we're losing money on the tax break which isn't entirely true because uh we give them a tax break this time but as a result the thing gets built and the infrastructure that we give them the tax break for goes into it to help build sidewalks p uh, power uh un putting uh, power lines underground water mains and stuff like that um it can it, okay i'm it can be used for a lot of that but it also expands the tax base because it's not necessarily about the the tax break that they get now it's about the future taxes um in um in foresight so uh let's see encouraging development builds more units businesses and the city tax base it's like selling land plus a tax break to boost infrastructure improvements through the city investing uh putting future taxes on the site so dale pickle ta uh, dale pickle talks about the history of the tax base in missoula so historically uh We've had uh, increment values of about 4% of the total tax base. It uh, went down a little bit here in the, these, these years. If you looked at the years prior to this, it's, it's really similar. Um, however, in 2018, you can see the big increases started happening. Um, you know, and I think two things happened at that time. Uh, the real estate market in um, Missoula um, and in Montana started getting uh, really hot. And we started seeing uh, um, you know, uh, more rapidly rising property values. And, uh, um, and, and more new construction. Um, and also, uh, it was also the uh, implementation of a two-year reappraisal cycle uh, that uh, started at the state. Um, prior to that, it was a six-year reappraisal cycle and those values were phased in. Now it's a two-year re reappraisal cycle and all of the value is uh, placed in on the first year. Um, so I think both of those things have contributed to this rapidly growing uh, tax base. Um, it happens outside of the URDs as well as inside, but as you can see, the um, increase inside the, the um, URDs is uh, growing uh, uh, quite a bit faster than um, outside of the urban and rural districts. Yeah, so a lot of ways people are just like, oh, Missoula is changing way too fast. 
but we have an annexation and then we have a larger tax base and more development that's happening, which encourages more development, which encourages even more development. And a lot of times developers who have seen success with their development have a tendency to come back and develop more in places that have seen a lot more success. So, uh, so because of this, TIFs have uh, more than tripled in the last eight years, starting from $4.5 million to $15.2 million. The tax base is also growing, and many folks who think Missoula is hemorrhaging money should look deeper into this and with an open mind, because if you keep going into uh, www.iamright.com, you'll miss the good and only see the bad. And so far, the city is projecting an additional $2 million in taxable value that could go towards projects like the Riverfront Triangle, Scott Street Housing. Uh, Riverfront Triangle has been a focus for the city of Missoula for about 40 years. They wanted to have a big development there, uh, event center, hotel, maybe uh, some affordable housing as well. Since um, and all, but uh, one of the things that they uh, tapped into was Nick Chakota, who is uh, who owns Logjam Presents, you know, the top hat owner. But he ended up pulling out during the pandemic because this pandemic's been hard on a lot of people, especially local businesses. Uh, and part of TIF funding is to provide not only an, an incentive but a positive lifeline to development that can be used to help Missoula directly without putting a financial burden on local residents. Mark Belong, board member, Missoula Midtown Associate, talks about the benefits of TIF. This is what he had to say. Midtown is changing rapidly and much of the beneficial development of our district utilize Urban Renewal District 3 investment of tax increment finance funds. In the last few years alone, TIF funding has been instrumental in the creation of vital east-west connections, new residential units, bike and pedestrian trail connections, MRL park and infrastructure improvements to support large commercial development, resulting, resulting in numerous jobs. Many of our members have been able to improve dated properties with aging or little infrastructure along Brook Street Corridor with facade improvement projects, landscaping and sidewalk projects in the public right of way because of the ERD 3 TIF investments. Okay, so uh, he also speaks a little bit further saying that a cap would not be um, good enough because that would slow down a lot of the projects and then uh, people wouldn't be able to uh, really invest at, in much into infrastructure in the community based on TIF inc a tax increment financing. So here is Mark Belong once again. We urge you not to rush to action on this resolution and to take a much closer look at the proposed cap on TIF funding and how it directly affects Urban Renewal District 3 and the momentum of the district's redevelopment efforts. The resolution could deplete resources for workforce and affordable housing projects to be identified in the master plan and jeopardize the city's ability to provide a local match for federal funding for Brook Street corridor improvements. This resolution in its current form will have lasting effects on the future of Midtown. And now is not the time to deprive this district of the one economic development tool we have. All right, so that was Mark Belong talking about that. And of course, you probably hear, heard that a lot from the city council members saying that this is one of the tools that they need to, that they use to help uh, leverage uh, infrastructure and uh, other improvements in certain areas as well. The Brooks Corridor has seen many changes from those days uh, from new stores, cafes, eateries, and so far they want to create density in Midtown and hope TIF can improve the corridor from Brooks to the downtown area. So far, the city is looking to improve the corridor from Higgins to the downtown area leading up until the bridge. Since with the uh, improvements in the bridge, they're looking to hopefully improve that area as well and also improve the uh, corridor from, e from Missoula to East Missoula. That seems to be another big hot topic because that road to East Missoula can be very treacherous, especially if you're a pedestrian and you're walking along there at late at night. Uh, John Nangan reflects on TIFs, and this is what John Nangan had to say. I am an unabashed proponent of uh, urban renewal districts and the tool that is tax increment financing, the work that um, that tool and the redevelopment agency um, through its board and through the actions of the Missoula City Council in collaboration with, uh, with uh, the executive branch of the city of Missoula um, have done remarkable things over the years and the investment that we've been able to make um, uh, using that tool have produced the community that we see today. And in many cases, I believe uh, a lot of what we uh, appreciate very much in the city of Missoula would go missing, but for the tool. And as we move forward, I also believe that uh, if we are um, ever to be in a position, which I think we are, of uh, really making meaningful progress in affordable and workforce housing uh, for our community that TIF and the urban renewal districts and uh, MRA will play a critical role in that. All right, 
So, and that was my last quote for city council. Uh, 45 out of 50 states use some form of tax increment financing. Arizona doesn't use them. And California uses something called CRIAs and EIFDs, which is basically what the city of Missoula did in terms of singular area, like block areas, like special improvement districts. But of course, if you want to learn more information about this, uh, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. I will show you that website a little bit later because I am going to talk a little bit more about... Um, um, hold on. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, some of the community meetings that happened as well. Um, so the Committee of the Whole gave an update on improving a food policy, and in my understanding is a localized farm-to-table advisory board for Missoula. Any of these fresh food would not work would work in conjunction with the Missoula Food Bank and other enti and en entities geared towards our food system. Growth, transportation, and consumption are important to provide safe, healthy food locally grown. So far, this was an information and how they are doing, and former city council member John Dabari gave the presentation. I don't have any clips for you guys, and so far they are working to engage in local farming and being able to improve the food system. Um, I, but I haven't heard too much about this. You know, the pandemic has kind of pushed a whole bunch of a lot of these advisory committees and a lot of these stuff's kind of put to the side. COVID has really affected housing, jobs, and a lot of that stuff that people are really... Um, uh, basically hell-bent on um, having the city improve and make sure the quality of life in Missoula is better. But this is just one of the things that is kind of being often overlooked. And so there's a lot of missing voices on this committee has been uh, kind of missing, but they still need. And uh, Missoula had a Missoula food co-op, which is permanently closed, unfortunately. And so many things are needed, but this committee is asking for your help with the Rapid Community Assessment Survey. So the Rapid Community Assessment Survey for the... Uh, the uh, community uh, food advisory board for the city of Missoula. They want you to reflect and they want they're doing a survey and so you can look at that online as well. Um, let's go to the city's website ci.missoula and if you go to this website you will see uh, a great page just kind of showing you exactly what you need to know. Uh, you know how do I, you can sign up for permits, you know you can report a pothole, you know so if you have any problems or anything like that um, but for meetings and where you can find your clips and stuff like kind of like what I did, you can go to uh, meetings right here and it'll bring you to the page where they show you uh, a calendar. I suggest you use the calendar. I've done list view before and it's very confusing, but for the calendar view, it is the best because it kind of shows you the each of the meetings based on uh, each day. And uh, look for Mondays and Wednesdays because those are where the bulk meetings happen for the biggest impact through the city of Missoula. And uh, yeah, that about does it for my city council report. I have a special video for you guys uh, right now, and this is featuring uh, Rowan Lemus from Do What I Just Drew. And it is a uh, basically a time lapse of his time when he was working with Spark. Um, we were on the street last Saturday, and uh, we're encouraging people to challenge Rowan for his drawing. He only had five minutes to draw each of these drawings. And for uh, and then for just for fun, I decided to make a time lapse for it. So here is the fruits of all that labor that happened last Saturday for Arts and Education Week. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about events that are happening within the city of Missoula. We're kicking things off. This is from MissoulaEvents.net. Missoula in Motion Community Challenge. I was hoping to get them on here, but they didn't answer. This is a two-week event. I'm not better. Uh, hey Missoula, the Community Challenge is back and registration is now open. Join the 2021 Community Challenge and the fall for a cool commute. This goal is for you and all your cohorts to make at least one sustainable commute to work between September 19th and October 2nd. Feed your competitive side and try to beat out all the other workplaces in town for prizes and more. You can log on to MissoulaInMotion.com slash Community Challenge for more information to register your team. Excel, so uh, you want to learn uh, Microsoft Excel? A lifelong learning center is the place to go. It's not only just about Excel, it's about uh, adult education and continued learning. So if you're ever curious about learning something new, Lifelong Learning Center is a great place to go check out. Uh, they have fees, but they're a continuing education and you can get certified and you can actually uh, put down a uh, proficient in Excel uh, without lying about it. Moving on, Missoula Public Library Spectrum Discovery Center is uh, hosting their uh, open uh, discovery bench from, t uh, just not bench, but discovery area from 10 a.m. to about 6 p.m. for visitors of all age to explore science through engaging exhibits and activities. Spectrum is here at the Public Library at 455 East Missoula. Uh, East, uh, sorry, 455 East Main Street. Mm. Uh, dueling pianos at Stave and Hoop is going to happen at noon today. So enjoy an interactive semi-raunches and f really fun event with Doug and Josh. Order up your songs and enjoy the friendly battle. No cover. Watercolor and painting and also... Uh, Yarns uh, here at the library started at noon, uh, so if you're interested, you can sign up online at the Missoula Public Library's website, or you can show up here, and they usually do it in the third floor, one of the meeting rooms, but you can ask a library staff for directions. Young Adults Writing Group uh, here at the Missoula P Public Library want to play with words and rev up your creativity. New to writing or a long-time writer, join us to share poems, stories, novels, rants, and writing games, and to laugh a lot. This group uh, is free, meets all year round, and is good for kids age 16 to 19, depending on COVID. This will likely be alternating Zoom meetings with live meetings in the Ellington room on level three. Um, teens can always join by Zoom um, simultaneously, even though we will meet live. And this happens from about 3.30 to about 5.30 p.m. geared towards teens. Youth Writers Group's great. E exhibit Reception and Apley, a hymn for the mother. Uh, Missoula Art Museum is hosting this exhibit uh, for quite a while, so you guys can check it out at the Missoula Art Museum. Kicking things off at officially at 5. Uh, that's their grand opening. Uh, let's see. Um, Pinky and the Floyd is going to be playing at the Wilma tonight as well. They play uh, um, Pink Floyd music. Um, for history buffs, uh, the Traders, Missoula Public Library, starting at 7 p.m., calling all histor hist history enthusiasts. For history buffs is a new program at Missoula Public Library held on the last Friday of each month from 7 to 9 p.m. Join guest speakers for a lively and entertaining presentation of historical interest. This month's presentation is the Traders, and the speaker, Larry, will lead the, the members on a discussion about how Aaron Burr and General James Wilkinson almost undid the Louisiana Purchase in 1806. Uh, you can check that out at Missoula Public Library. It's happening tonight at 7 p.m. Night Witch, Trans Future at La Forge. It's going to be at the Zootown Arts Community Center starting at 7.30 p.m. tonight. Tetsuo 2, Body Hammer, will be at the Roxy at 8 p.m. Uh, the final comedy showcase at the Giggle Box uh, is going to be at the Mall at 8.30 p.m. tonight. Um, and those are your Friday night events. Moving on to your Saturdays. Um, Saturday event, markets continue until the last week in October. Um, daily Farmers Markets, um, you know, uh, markets continue until the last week in October. Uh, you got the farmer's market by the Red X's. You got the River Street Market at the Carousel. And then you got the uh, People's Market in front of Thomas Marbar off of Pine Street. Um, and you guys can check that out. It goes on well until October. Uh, and it goes from 8 a.m. to about 1 p.m. roughly. Uh, the People's Market starts a little bit later. But other than that, it's pretty much uh, the best bet is to go from 9 to about 1. Maybe show up at 10. I don't know. That's usually when I show up. Uh, basic silversmithing, lifelong learning center. Uh, 8.30 a.m. Lifelong Learning Center, like I always say, a bunch of learning things as well, but this one kind of stood out because you're going to make your own jewelry, and then you can sell it at the people's market. Use hammers to <laughs> texture with metal stamps, wires, or lace, and create cold connections to using rivets and eyelids. Um, they also uh, will be having uh, mini classes as well. They also do have a DSLR camera class around the same time, just overall good education for adults. CPR certification as well for those of you who are looking to get re-upped for their CPR certification. Bike to Barnes, Target Range and Orchard Homes is hosting a uh, third annual Bike to Barnes event uh, and this bike adventure tour with 10 plus farm stops and about to 15 miles. Learn about some of the farms here in the city of Missoula and some of the uh, co 
co-ops that happen in, in the back uh, roots of the target range area. There's a lot of farms and co-ops there, a great pumpkin patch, and a great time to go check a lot of that stuff out. Your choice of t-shirt and a reusu reusable tote. The event runs from August 14th to about September 30th, so put out your helmet and pump up your tires. Take out your tour anytime, split it up, grab friends, and make it yours. So. That's what's happening in that. And, of course, the Moon Randolph Homestead on Saturdays is going to be open until the end of October from 11 to about 5 p.m. You learn about the public tour, go to a public tour, and you get to uh, explore the historic homestead with a uh, wild plum thicket, heritage, apple orchard, barn, root cellar, and livestock at your own pl pace. Visitors encourage you to picnic, draw, write, play, and spend time in this unique public cultural site. Uh, National Public Lands Day Volunteer Opportunities, Rattlesnake Dam Restoration Site. Volunteer Opportunities, it's uh, National Public Lands Day, so they want to encourage people on September 21st and the 25th, which is happening tomorrow, and it uh, starts at 1 p.m. Uh, join the uh, Missoula Conser uh, Conservation Lands Programs and lend a hand to uh, continued restoration of the former Rattlesnake Creek Dam site. The dam has basically been inactive, but it's been owned by the water company for quite some time, but when the city acquired the water company, they are now looking to restore the river back to its former glory because this is back when we used to uh, actually this is where we got our water for many years back until the 70s when there was a huge um, uh, huge shift with a lot of uh, bacteria diseases that would cause diarrhea um, and so as a result the uh, water system had to ultimately change and that's uh, and so the city of Missouri used to get their water from uh, rattlesnake Hence why they had the dam there in the first place. Volunteer, uh, sign uh, you can go to volunteersignup.org or look for Rattlesnake Dam. And look, f and look for Rattlesnake Dam. Boom. All right. So are you interested in uh, doing some theater? Uh, but are you also interested in doing theater about COVID? So starting at 3 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library, third floor, they're doing a audition. So at 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, you guys can do... Uh, uh, for immediate release, Joyrise Movement LLC is staging a theatrical performance in support of Friends of the Shelter, the financial aid arm of Missoula Animal Control Division. The purpose of this performance is to raise money for Missoula Can County Animal Shelter on Butler Creek Road. Carrie Ann is uh, deeply grateful for her assistance. Uh, so all characters uh, have pronounced New York regional accents. So that's the only thing you really need to know. Comedic improvisational, improv um, improvisational uh, improv skills requested. Jeez. Uh, John Floridus is going to be playing at Dropworks Brewing Company tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, Tent, Tent and Gravity Research Stoke on Fire Premiere. Missoula Paddleheads Ballpark is doing a th uh, thing at 6 p.m. Get ready for Missoula on Saturday. Uh, is returning. Uh, TGR is returning to the Paddleheads Ballpark for the winter kickoff celebration this year. Joining for Hyped for Winter with a new feature length ski and snowboard films. Stoke the Fire will support a great cause as a portion of the proceeds benefit the Missoula Freestyle Team. Uh, VFP Gates at 5.15 p.m. General mission at 6 p.m. Film at 7 p.m. This is $15 for general mission, $10, uh, $10 for ages 15 and under, $55 for 10 by 10 for up to four people, $100 for up to eight people groups. So there's just a lot of opportunities happening at the Missoula Paddahus Baseball Park as we move on to the fall season. Um, Ro Mira debut uh, album release at Free Cycles, so you get to enjoy some of that stuff. And then, of course, there is the Google Box, which is doing their closing party at the Southgate Mall at their location at 7.30 p.m. on Saturday night. Uh, Hunt for the Wilder People is a great movie. Uh, I suggest you go watch it. It's going to be uh, featured at the Roxy uh, tomorrow night at 9 p.m. And then finally, on Sunday, we got the Target Rames Farmer's Market from 10 to about 2. I always like to highlight them because if you miss out the Farmer's Market on Saturdays, you can go to Target Range uh, School and you can check out their uh, produce and goods and all that stuff for all the farms and co-ops in the Target Range area. And it happens from 10 to about 2. And then one of the best events that happens every year is the Save Kids Fair. Community Medical Center, uh, one of their parking lots, is hosting a whole family-friendly event that is more than just that. It is an annual event that promotes Western Montana life-saving education and take action information and pr uh, protect children from preventable injuries, the leading cause of death for children in the U.S. And here in Montana, this is an issue that we all can and must address head-on. Um, first annual fall Missoula Lax Showcase Party, Missoula Play Playfair Park, which is by the YMCA off of Russell Street, Missoula Youth of the Cross, Eagle, Spartans, and Wild invite you to join the uh, uh, Missoula Lax Lacrosse team, which is LAX. Okay, showcases at Playfair Park. 
Sunday, September 26th, 1 to 3 p.m., the great raffle prizes, free stickers, 3x3 three three games, 3-on-3 three three games, and free pizza. Challenge your friends to speed war with the speedometer. We'll have a loner sticks and balls. This will be a fun and safe opportunity to give lacrosse a try with no cost or equipment necessary. All clubs, all ages, all players. So they're really trying to get some people to jump on this lacrosse thing. So why not? It's fun. I've played lacrosse. We played it during uh, PE, during class, during uh, school and all that stuff. It's actually a really fun game where you have balls and little uh, in sticks and you toss it to each other or you toss it on the ground and you scoop it up. It's a nice and fast-paced game. Really fun. Lots of family fun Sunday events before October. Uh, pumpkin patches going to full gear. So there's about all your events that are happening as well. I did have a special guest last weekend who played a, a song. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to air it on my morning show because uh, the event happened the day I interviewed him. So without further ado, I'm going to show you a clip from Sam Weber, who is a musician that was here in Missoula. He's a traveling musician, and I was able, and I was very lucky to have him in here. And I'm going to end the show with uh, some uh, with Sam we uh, Weber's song. <laughs> My girl got engaged to some guy before she even knew my name. I've been trying to live my life out anyway. So I'm gonna spend the rest of my years checking up with my regrets. Cause I didn't come out swinging like a real dead ringer on the chapel steps. Where did it all come? to light how you feel I can't keep a secret babe but I'll make you a deal when it all comes to light over time true Wife's way more in the sex now that you're not married to her. I guess people change and love is strange. I've learned it's real hard trying to tell the truth when you know you gotta hurt someone. Feels like staring down a long cold barrel of a loaded gun, and then it all comes to light how you feel you can't keep a secret babe but I'll make you a deal when it all comes to light over time true Thank you. 